Jesus came to Jordan to be baptized by John. He did not come for pardon, but as his father's son, he came to share repentance with all who mourn their sins, to speak the vital sentence with which good news A very pleasant good afternoon and welcome to our noonday prayer as we continue in this season of the Epiphany, but fast approaching the season of Lent. So let us observe a moment of silent prayer as we prepare for our devotion today. The Lord has declared his salvation, his righteousness he has openly displayed for all the nations to see. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our reading today comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, and beginning to read at verse 53. When Jesus and his disciples had crossed over, they came to the land at Genesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized Jesus and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. and all who touched the fringe of his cloak were healed. The popularity of Jesus is growing among the people. He has fast become known as a miracle worker. People are flocking from all over to meet with him and to receive his healing touch, whether by hand or cloak, as you just heard. Yet I do believe that this presentation of Jesus as a miracle worker is not the main thing, it's not the main focus of the writer, really. Yes, it demonstrates his power to overcome what ailed people, what prevented them from attaining to their greater potential, what denied them from having the fullest life possible. But more importantly, though, these miraculous acts of Jesus demonstrated the presence of God in him and among the people. Those who came were drawn to this sense of God's presence, and in it they saw hope. Hope that the future can be brighter, the impossible had a chance to become the possible, and that the rejection and isolation they experienced did not extend to how God related to them. That's not how God saw it. Jesus' message and ministry became the assurance of a loving God who welcomed them into his love and his presence and his grace. I suppose for us who now read these accounts and find our hope in such a loving God rekindled, the issue becomes whether we too can be vessels in and through which others can experience this healing grace and presence of God. In our encounters with others, do we radiate with the love, compassion, and mercy with which Jesus was able to heal and restore, with which he was able to transform lives and 
make them embrace new beginnings, new possibilities, new realities? Let us then, my friends, in our daily sojourn of faith, seek in every way to be more like Jesus. Let us strive to be reconcilers, healers, unifiers, enablers, and the like, so that in our interactions become life-giving and life-affirming. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come to you. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life, which you have made known to us in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Faithful God, as we go out into the world shining your light and your truth, help us to reflect your love in our families, our church, and our community, so that the world can witness that we are followers of Christ, and through that witness draw others into your loving care. Amen. Almighty God and Heavenly Father, we bless and praise your name on behalf of all who are sick, and we give you humble thanks that you have been pleased to deliver them from sickness. Grant, O gracious Father, that by your help they may live in this world according to your will and be made partakers of everlasting glory in the life to come. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. My sisters and brothers, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now may the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon us and grant us his peace. And the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you and your loved ones near or far this day, and remain with you always. Amen. Sentence with which good news begins.